Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your answer. And I'd like also like to echo your your thanks to transport workers working across London at this very dangerous and scary time. How long have non facial medical how long have non medical facial coverings been available to TfL staff? They were made available to uh, staff uh, as soon as the advice from the government uh, changed. Uh, I think it was uh, 10 days uh, ago. But those staff who do work that requires PPE have still been using PPE. Uh, so for other staff and contractors, the basic masks were available after the Prime Minister's uh, announcement of the change of uh, guidance. Why did you wait so long to provide your own staff with, with these facial coverings? You have full control over this. They had to wait seven weeks, Mr. Mayor, seven weeks. You could have taken charge of that much earlier on. Well, as we've rehearsed in a previous answer, I'm in daily contact with the government, but also Public Health England, SAGE, and experts from the World Health Organization. Their advice and guidance is quite clear that uh, medical PPE, surgical visors, uh, and the like, PPE should only be for those in NHS and uh, care settings. They should not be used in other settings like transport or, or food and other outlets. And we've followed the advice. In the meantime, we were lobbying the government in relation to the wearing of non-medical, non-surgical medical covering. Just to remind colleagues, this does not keep the wearer safe. It keeps other people safe because it stops the virus being passed on. Once the government changed the advice, we made available to our staff and contractors these basic masks, and we continue to do so. But surely, Mr Mayor, your job is to make a special case for, for London. They're your staff. They rely on you to keep them safe. You have full control of this. Why did it take so long? Are you comfortable with the delay that, that you've in, instituted for, for, these, for your staff to, before they could get this protection? So the measures we've introduced in London, our public transport, are the most comprehensive of any transport authority in the country. Not just the long-lasting hospital quality antiviral disinfectant, not just the regular... Uh, cl cleansing of uh, 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 buses, key touch points, the depots, the restroom, the garages, not just asking the trade unions to also help with the inspections, but also we closed off the front door, uh, which is criticised by the government, uh, saying passengers stay away from drivers only using the middle doors, not allowing passengers to embark or disembark, but also put a protective film on the perspex glass. Because I'm keen to make sure we can do as much as we can and learn in real time, I've asked TfL to commission world leading experts, UCL, led by Sir Michael Marmot, who is undertaking an urgent review of all the steps we've taken uh, uh, to see whether they are the right steps at the right time, but also what more we can be doing. And they'll be providing their review, their report, in the next uh, few weeks. We'll see what further steps we need to be taken. But I'm confident that not only have we followed all the advice and best guidance, we've gone above and beyond what we've been asked to do so. Are you comfortable with the delay that you've had, though? You've spoken a lot about the government and what they haven't done. What we're interested in, what you have done. Are you comfortable with what you have done to keep TfL staff safe? Remember, they had to wait seven full weeks before you provided them with any kind of protection. Whilst, by the way, you were asking for everybody else to wear masks, you weren't providing them for your own staff. That feels like a failure on your part to deliver for your own staff who, of course, have died at a rate five times that of NHS workers. So it's a very serious thing for you not to deliver on this particular protection. Well, it's important to get the facts right, particularly when it's a premise of a question. So I was lobbying the government to change their guidance in relation to the wearing of non-medical facial coverings. That guidance changed 10 days ago when the Prime Minister announced uh, on Sunday, uh, he announced in a COVID legion, or he was going to be doing this, and he made the announcement on uh, Sunday, and the guidance was published on uh, Monday. We then uh, started providing the basic masks to not just our staff, but our contractors as well. In the meantime, we've been going above and beyond working with hardworking trade unions to make sure all our staff and passengers are as safe as they uh, can be. And I'm confident that we've been having regular contact, not just with staff, uh, not just with trade unions, but also with public health experts across the country and around the world to do what we can. It's not the case uh, that we haven't been making sure that we're providing safe public transport for passengers and uh, staff. One of the things, one of the reasons why I've asked uh, uh, TfL to urgently instruct UCL to do this piece of work is to make sure in real time that we learn any lessons that need to be learned, not in three or four years' time when there's been an independent public inquiry that needs to be had. 
Mr. Mayor, you failed to provide the, the protection for your staff over seven weeks, a seven week period. So it feels quite hard to sit here and hear you talk about real time, because in that time, the unions criticised you for not defending your staff. I, I asked you to do more to defend your staff and you didn't do it. And it feels like a failure. Londoners have watched for seven weeks while transport staff have died and you did not provide any protection for them. Well, the, the difference between you and I is I've been regularly engaging with not just the staff, but with the trade unions. And I noticed, unfortunately, you didn't give them credit in the beginning of the question as you did uh, others. I give them credit. The trade unions have done a brilliant job representing their staff who their staff who have been scared of uh, going to work. It's because we've been listening to the trade unions and the workers that we stopped the front door being used on our buses and we only allowed embarking and disembarking on the middle doors. It's because we've been listening to the staff, the workers, the trade unions, that we added an additional protective film over the perspex that separates the driver from the passenger. It's because we listened to the trade unions and the staff that we stopped passengers sitting next to bus drivers so they were a number of metres away from bus drivers. It's because we listened to the trade unions and the workers that we said to the trade unions, you provide additional inspectors uh, to make sure that you're reassured. But it's also because we've listened to the staff and workers and trade unions, we provided our staff with hand sanitizers, alcohol wipes to make sure they were confident that the touch points were as clean as they could be. We also, in the meantime, made Mr. sure... Mayor, Mr. Mayor, sorry to interrupt you. Staff. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Mayor, but we're time pressured, as, as you know, so I'm going to stop there. But you failed to deliver these things without well, being pressured. Stop it and you, then you, you make a statement. You can't have both ways, Chair. You either to stop it or you're going to make a statement. It's, well, it's a virtual meeting. It's very difficult to be heckled virtually. <laughs> you. Can, can, you, can you please you not to, be uh, to take any action at all? You failed your own staff. Sorry, Chair. Is there a question for me, Chair? Because it's very difficult. I've been talked to answer my question. Thank you, 